Catherine, Princess of Wales, born Catherine Elizabeth Middleton, January 9, 1982, is a member of the British royal family. She is married to William, Prince of Wales, heir apparent to the British throne. Born in Reading, Catherine grew up in Buckleberry, Berkshire. She was educated at St. Andrews School and Marlborough College before studying art history at the University of St. Andrews in Scotland, where she met Prince William in 2001. She held several jobs in retail and marketing and pursued charity work before their engagement was announced in November 2010. They married on April 29, 2011, at Westminster Abbey. The couple have three children, George, Charlotte, and Louis. Catherine holds patronage with over 20 charitable and military organizations, including the Anna Freud Center, Action for Children, Sports Aid, and the National Portrait Gallery. She undertakes projects through the Royal Foundation, with her charity work focusing on issues surrounding early childhood care, addiction, and art. To encourage people to discuss their mental health problems, Catherine envisioned the Mental Health Awareness Campaign Heads Together, which she launched with her husband William and brother-in-law Harry in April 2016. The media have called Catherine's impact on British and American fashion the Kate Middleton effect. Time listed her as one of the most influential people in the world in 2011, 2012 and 2013 and as a finalist in 2018. On September 9, 2022, she became Princess of Wales when her husband was created Prince of Wales by his father, King Charles III. Early life, education, and career Catherine Elizabeth Middleton was born on January 9, 1982, at the Royal Berkshire Hospital in reading into an upper-middle-class family. She was baptized at St. Andrew's Bradfield, a local parish church, on June 20, 1982. Her parents, Michael Middleton and Carol, née Goldsmith, were a flight dispatcher and flight attendant at British Airways, respectively, she is the eldest of their three children. In 1987, her mother founded Party Pieces, a privately held mail-order company that sold party supplies and decorations. Following her mother's retirement and the buyout of her majority shareholding, the new business management at that stage encountered difficulties after axing the quarterly product catalog. Party Pieces was subsequently rescued from administration in 2023 by millionaire entrepreneur James Sinclair. By the early 20th century, the Middleton family had married into British aristocracy and benefited financially from trust funds, which they had established over a century ago. Her Middleton relatives, including her great-grandparents Noel and Olive Middleton, played host to members of the British royal family in the 1920s through to the 1940s. Her mother's family are descended from coal miners and have been described as working class. She has a younger sister, Philippa, and a younger brother, James. The family moved from Bradfield South End, Berkshire, to Amman, Jordan, in May 1984, where Catherine attended an English-language nursery school. When her family returned to Berkshire in September 1986, she was enrolled aged four at St. Andrew's School, a private school near Pangbourne in Berkshire. She boarded part weekly at St. Andrews in her later years. In 1995, her family moved to the village of Buckleberry where she studied at Downhouse School. Middleton was a boarder at Marlborough College, a co-educational boarding school in Wiltshire, where she showed talent in sports and was captain of the women's field hockey team. She obtained three A-levels in 2000, with an A in mathematics and a in art and a B in English. Despite being offered a seat at the University of Edinburgh, Middleton took a gap year, studying at the British Institute of Florence in Italy and traveling to Chile to participate in a Raleigh International program, she worked as a deckhand at the port of Southampton in the summer preceding university. She subsequently enrolled at the University of St. Andrews in Fife, Scotland, to study art history. She briefly studied psychology before focusing solely on art history, she worked part-time as a waitress during her studies, while attending university, she achieved a Gold Duke of Edinburgh Award. Middleton was an active member of the Lumsden Club, which held fundraisers and community projects each year. In 2005, she graduated from the University of St. Andrews with an undergraduate MA, 2, colon 1 Hans, in art history. In November 2006, Middleton commenced part-time work for 12 months as an accessory buyer with the clothing chain Jigsaw, 
In 2007, she curated a photography exhibition to mark the book launch of Time to Reflect, by Alastair Morrison, to raise funds for UNICEF. In 2008, Middleton made several trips to Naomi's house hospice, where she brought gifts and read to children. Later that year, she organized a 1980s-themed roller disco fundraiser which raised £100,000, split between Oxford Children's Hospital, for the construction of Tom's Ward to treat pediatric cancer, and Place 2B, an organization which provides mental health counseling to school children. She also worked until January 2011 at the family business in catalog design and production, marketing, and photography while working for the company. She launched the firm's junior brand for toddlers, and began working with the Starlight Children's Foundation, which helps terminally ill youth, providing party essentials. For sick children, Middleton also helped coordinate the Boodles Boxing Ball, which raised money for the charity prior to her marriage. She lived in an apartment owned by her parents in Chelsea, London, with her sister. Personal life In 2001, Middleton met Prince William while they were students in residence at St. Salvatore's Hall at the University of St. Andrews. She reportedly caught William's eye at a charity fashion show at the university in 2002 when she appeared on the stage wearing a see-through lace dress. The couple began dating in 2003. During their second year, Middleton shared a flat with William and two other friends. From 2003 until 2005, they both resided at Balgove House on the Strathtyrum estate with two roommates. In 2004, the couple briefly split but later rekindled their relationship. After her graduation, Middleton and her family were faced with intensive tabloid press scrutiny. She was often photographed daily by the paparazzi outside her flat and work over the course of their relationship. This prompted multiple warnings from her lawyers and the palace. She attended William's passing out parade at the Royal Military Academy Sandhurst on December 15, 2006. In April 2007, they ended their relationship. She and her family attended the concert for Diana in July 2007, where she and William sat two rows apart. It was subsequently reported that the couple had then reconciled. On May 17, 2008, Middleton attended the wedding of William's cousin Peter Phillips to Autumn Kelly in William's stead, and met Queen Elizabeth II for the first time. Middleton attended the Order of the Garter procession at Windsor Castle in June 2008, where William was made a Royal Knight of the Garter. On July 19, 2008, she was a guest at the wedding of Lady Rose Windsor and George Gilman while William was away on military operations in the Caribbean, serving aboard HMS Iron Duke. In June 2010, the couple moved into a cottage on the Bottergan estate in Anglesey, Wales, where William resided during his RAF search and rescue training and subsequent career. Marriage and Children Further Information Wedding of Prince William and Catherine Middleton Wedding dress of Catherine Middleton, and engagement dress of Catherine Middleton with William and their children at Trooping the Color 2019 Middleton and William became engaged in October 2010, in Kenya, during a 10-day trip to the Lewa Wildlife Conservancy to celebrate William passing the RAF helicopter search and rescue course. Clarence House announced the engagement on November 16, 2010. William gave her the engagement ring that had belonged to his mother. Diana, Princess of Wales. Middleton, who was christened as a child, decided to be confirmed into the Church of England preceding her wedding. The confirmation service was conducted on 10 March at St. James's Palace by the Bishop of London with her family and William in attendance. The couple married on April 29, 2011 at Westminster Abbey, St. Catherine's Day, with the day declared a bank holiday in the United Kingdom. Estimates of the global audience for the wedding ranged around 300 million or more, whilst 26 million watched the event live in Britain alone. Her wedding dress was designed by Sarah Burton at Alexander McQueen. Catherine assumed the style, Her Royal Highness, the Duchess of Cambridge. The couple was given the country home Anmer Hall, on the Sandringham estate, as a wedding gift from the Queen, Catherine keeps bees on the grounds. Following their marriage in 2011, the couple used Nottingham Cottage as their London residence, they moved into the four-story, 20-room apartment 1A at Kensington Palace in 2013. Renovations took 18 months at a cost of £4.5 pounds million. Kensington Palace became William and Catherine's main residence in 2017. In 2022, 
It was announced that the couple and their children would move to Adelaide Cottage in Windsor. They officially moved into the house in September 2022. On December 3, 2012, St. James's Palace announced that Catherine was pregnant with her first child. The announcement was made earlier in the pregnancy than as usual as she had been admitted to King Edward VII's hospital suffering from hyperemesis gravidarum, a severe form of morning sickness. Prince George was born at St. Mary's Hospital in London on 22 July 2013. The severe morning sickness returned with the subsequent pregnancies, forcing Catherine to cancel her official engagements. She gave birth to Princess Charlotte on 2 May 2015 and to Prince Louis on April 23, 2018. George, Charlotte and Louis were respectively third, fourth and fifth in the line of succession to the British throne at the times of their births. William and Catherine have owned two English cocker, spaniels, named Lupo and Orla. Health Catherine was admitted to the London Clinic in January 2024, where she underwent abdominal surgery for an undisclosed medical condition. Due to her medical procedure and convalescence period, she postponed all her public engagements and duties until after Easter that year. Speculation about Catherine's absence prompted conspiracy theories and attracted commentary in the press. On March 22, she announced publicly that tests done post operation had shown that she had cancer and she had begun chemotherapy. After her diagnosis, numerous messages of support were voiced, including from her father in law, King Charles III from her brother-in-law, the Duke and his wife Duchess of Sussex, and from her younger brother James Middleton. Statements were also issued by the White House of the United States, by British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak, by Meghan McCain, by Keir Starmer the leader of the Labour Party, and by other politicians. Public Life Middleton's first public appearance with William following their engagement announcement in November 2010 was at a fundraising event organized by the Teenage Cancer Trust in December 2010. She was formally introduced to public life on February 24, 2011, when the couple attended a lifeboat naming ceremony in Trierder, near their home at that time in Anglesey, North Wales. A day later, they appeared in St. Andrews to launch the university's 600th anniversary celebrations. In March 2011, the couple toured Belfast. Catherine's first official engagement after her wedding came in May, when she and William met Barack and Michelle Obama at Buckingham Palace. William and Catherine's first royal tour of Canada took place in July 2011. The couple's activities included attending celebrations for Canada Day. The tour's two day trip to California was Catherine's first visit to the United States. In October 2011, she undertook her first solo engagement at a reception for In Kind Direct, hosted at Clarence House, stepping in for Prince Charles, with William in Ottawa during their first royal tour of Canada. 2011 In November 2011, Catherine and William visited the UNICEF Supply Division for Malnourished Children in Copenhagen, Denmark. On St. Patrick's Day in 2012, she carried out the traditional awarding of shamrocks to the Irish guards at their Aldershot base in her first solo military engagement. On March 19 that year, Catherine gave her first public speech for the opening of a children's hospice opened by her patronage, East Anglia's Children's Hospices. She and William were announced as ambassadors for the 2012 Summer Olympics in London. As part of her role, Catherine attended numerous sporting events throughout the Games, in September 2012, the couple embarked on a tour of Singapore, Malaysia, Tuvalu, and the Solomon Islands to commemorate Elizabeth II's Diamond Jubilee across the Commonwealth. During this overseas visit, she made her first official speech abroad, while visiting a hospice in Malaysia, drawing on her experience as patron of East Anglia's children's hospices. The couple attended further celebrations of the Jubilee throughout the year, including the Thames Diamond Jubilee pageant in July. The first engagement that Catherine carried out after the birth of Prince George was on August 30, 2013, when she accompanied William to meet runners preparing for an ultramarathon in Anglesey. At the beginning of March 2014, it was announced that the couple would be accompanied by their son on an upcoming tour of New Zealand and Australia from 16 to 25 April. The tour itinerary included visiting the Pluckett Society for Children and visiting fire damaged areas in New South Wales in June. 2014, the couple visited France to attend an event commemorating 70 years since the Normandy landings at Gold Beach, 
in July 2014, it was announced that Catherine would be making her first solo trip, visiting Malta in September 2014, when the island was celebrating its 50th independence anniversary. Her trip was cancelled, with her husband taking her place. After the announcement of her second pregnancy in early September, in December 2014, the couple visited the United States and attended a charity dinner at the Metropolitan Museum of Art. On an official visit to Stockholm, Sweden, in 2018 and October 2015, Catherine attended her first state banquet at Buckingham Palace, held to host Chinese President Xi Jinping. In April 2016, she and William undertook a tour to India and Bhutan. Activities included visiting children's charities such as Childline India, as well as a visit to Lincana Palace. Later that month, the couple met again with the Obamas at Kensington Palace. The couple toured Canada again in September 2016. On October 11, 2016, Catherine made her first solo foreign trip to the Netherlands. Countries visited by the couple in 2017 include France, Poland, Germany, and Belgium. Catherine is known to take official portraits of her children and joined the Royal Photographic Society in 2017. She visited Luxembourg City in May 2017 for the Treaty of London commemorations. In January 2018, the couple visited Sweden and Norway. In February 2019, William and Catherine carried out a two-day visit of Northern Ireland, visiting Belfast, Fermanagh, and Ballymena. In June 2019, Catherine took the royal first salute, typically received by the Queen, at the Beating Retreat military pageant. She accompanied her husband on a tour of Pakistan in October 2019, the royal family's first visit to the country in 13 years. The couple conducted an interview for CNN in Lahore while visiting the SOS Children's Village, where Catherine gave a speech relating to her work on the early years. In March 2020, the couple carried out a three-day tour of Ireland, visiting County Meath, Kildare, and Galway. In October 2020, William and Catherine met President Volodymyr Zelensky of Ukraine and First Lady Alina Zelenska at Buckingham Palace, the first royal engagement held at the residence since the start of the COVID-19 pandemic. In December that year, the couple embarked on a three-day tour of England, Scotland, and Wales via the British Royal Train to pay tribute to the inspiring work of individuals, organizations and initiatives across the country in 2020. Boris Johnson expressed his support for the initiative, while First Minister of Scotland Nicola Sturgeon criticised the tour, citing travel restrictions, UK, Scottish and Welsh governments were consulted before planning the tour. In May 2021, the couple returned to Scotland for an extensive tour of Edinburgh, Fife and Orkney. In Cornwall on June 11, 2021, William and Catherine attended the G7 summit for the first time. Catherine visited primary students alongside Jill Biden and participated in a roundtable discussion focusing on early childhood education with William, their children, and other senior royals on the balcony of Buckingham Palace following the Platinum Jubilee pageant on June 5, 2022. In February 2022, Catherine visited Denmark to learn about the country's plans for social and emotional development of youngsters and also to celebrate milestones of both countries' monarchs. In March 2022, she and William embarked on a tour of Belize, the Bahamas, and Jamaica to commemorate Elizabeth II's Platinum Jubilee. Princess of Wales Queen Elizabeth II died on September 8, 2022, and Catherine's father-in-law succeeded as Charles III. The following day, William was created Prince of Wales by his father, making Catherine Princess of Wales. On September 27, 2022, Catherine and William visited Anglesey and Swansea, which marked their first visit to Wales since becoming Princess and Prince of Wales. On February 9, 2023, they visited Falmouth, marking their first visit to the region since becoming Duke and Duchess of Cornwall. Charity work following her marriage, Catherine assumed royal duties and commitments in support of the British monarch. In March 2011, she and William set up a gift fund held by the foundation of Prince William and Prince Harry to allow well-wishers who wanted to give them a wedding gift to donate money to charities they care about instead. The gift fund supported 26 charities of the couple's choice, incorporating the armed forces, children, the elderly, art, sport and conservation. In June 2012, the foundation of Prince William and Prince Harry was renamed to reflect Catherine's contribution to the charity. 
It is now known as the Royal Foundation of the Prince and Princess of Wales. With William attending a Commonwealth Big Lunch at St. Luke's Community Centre in Islington, March 2018 Catherine's charity work primarily focuses on issues surrounding young children, mental health, sport, addiction, and art. Her impact on charitable donations and project visibility has been called the Kate Effect. She holds a number of charitable patronages, Action for Children, the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club, the Anna Freud Centre, East Anglia's Children's Hospices, each, Evelina London Children's Hospital, Family Action, the Maternal Mental Health Alliance, the National Portrait Gallery, the Natural History Museum, NHS Charities Together, Place 2B, the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists, Sports Aid, the Scouts, the 1851 Trust, the Foundling Museum, the Lawn Tennis Association, the Royal Photographic Society, and the Victoria and Albert Museum. Catherine, being an art history graduate, also takes an interest in art and handpicked the art room, which helped disadvantaged children access art therapy before its closure, as well as the National Portrait Gallery. She acquired patronage of the Lawn Tennis Association, the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club, Action for Children, and the Royal Photographic Society after they were passed down by Queen Elizabeth II. In December 2015, she assumed patronage of the Royal Air Force. Air Cadets, for youths 12 to 19 years of age. The Duke of Edinburgh, who had been patron of the RAF cadets for 63 years, formally handed over during an audience at Buckingham Palace, she became patron of the Foundling Museum, a museum to commemorate the Foundling Hospital, in 2019. Catherine was also a local volunteer leader with the Scout Association in North Wales, of which Queen Elizabeth II was patron, before being made co-president in September 2020, alongside the Duke of Kent. In her capacity as patron of Action on Addiction, Catherine has occasionally made visits to its centers, spending time with recovering addicts. In October 2012, she, alongside Action on Addiction, launched the Impact Program, Moving Parents and Children Together, one of the only UK programs to focus specifically on the impact of drug addiction on families. 283 Place 2B volunteers were trained through the program to reach over 26,000 children. In June 2021, Catherine was announced as patron of the Forward Trust after its merger with Action on Addiction. As a patron of the Forward Trust, she launched a campaign titled Taking Action on Addiction. Catherine has worked extensively in children's palliative care alongside East Anglia's children's hospices and undertakes private visits to children's hospices and their families. She made her first public address at the opening of their Ipswich facility in 2012. Catherine officially opened their Norfolk Hospice in 2019, after previously launching their financial appeal in 2014, which raised £10 million. She has carried out engagements to raise awareness of Children's Hospice Week since 2013. Presenting the Ladies' Singles Trophy to Elena Rybakina at the 2022 Wimbledon Championships, Catherine is a keen sportswoman and attends Wimbledon annually. She has been patron of the All England Lawn Tennis and Croquet Club since 2016. Catherine, who enjoys sailing, has occasionally taken part in the sport to raise money for charity. In 2012, together with her husband and his brother Harry, Catherine launched Coach Corps. The program was set up following the 2012 Olympics to provide apprenticeship opportunities for people who desire to pursue a career as a professional coach. As of 2018, Coach Corps has had over 400 apprentices and graduates across 10 locations. In 2014, she and William were awarded honorary life membership of the Marylebone Cricket Club. In July 2019, she lent her support to Backyard Nature, a campaign created to inspire children, families, and communities to get outside and engage with nature. In August 2019, the couple competed in the King's Cup Yachting Regatta to raise money for eight different charities. In February 2022, she became patron of the Rugby Football Union and the Rugby Football League, both governing bodies that were previously supported by her brother-in-law Harry. In August 2022, it was announced that Catherine and Roger Federer would attend the Labour Cup Open Practice Day on September 22, which she had to pull out from due to the mourning period following the death of Queen Elizabeth II, but the proceeds from the event were donated to her patronage's Action for Children and the Lawn Tennis Association. 
In 2014, Catherine wrote the foreword for Living in the Slipstream, Life as an RAF Wife, whose proceeds raised money for charity. Since acquiring patronage of the RAF cadets, she has made visits to their base in Cambridgeshire and celebrated their 75th anniversary in 2016. In January 2018, locks of her hair were reportedly donated to the Little Princess Trust, a charity which made wigs for children diagnosed with cancer. In February 2018, she became patron of the Royal College of Obstetricians and Gynecologists. She also launched Nursing Now, a three-year worldwide campaign to raise awareness about the profile of nurses. She has written of her family ties with nursing and that both her grandmother, Valerie Middleton, and her great-grandmother, Olive Middleton, were VAD nurses for the British Red Cross. During the COVID-19 pandemic, Catherine undertook many in-person and virtual engagements supporting National Health Service workers. She discreetly volunteered with the Royal Voluntary Service during the COVID-19 pandemic. Catherine has called herself an enthusiastic amateur photographer and has taken official portraits of her children, as well as other members of the royal family. In 2019, she supported workshops run by the Royal Photographic Society in partnership with Action for Children to highlight the effect of photography in expressing thoughts in young people. As patron of the Royal Photographic Society, she and other photographers took part in an exhibition that marked 75 years since the end of the Holocaust. Photos taken by Catherine of the Holocaust survivors were later included in an exhibition at the Imperial War Museum. Catherine curated an exhibition of Victorian photography at the National Portrait Gallery with a thematic focus on childhood. In May 2020, she launched Hold Still, a project to capture people's life during lockdown, which garnered 31,000 submissions. In July 2020, the exhibition was released, with the final 100 photographs being displayed online. In October 2020, the portraits were displayed on 112 public sites, including billboards, murals, and posters across 80 towns and cities. The online exhibition collected over 5.2 million page views. The photographs were published in a book on May 7, 2021, titled Hold Still, A Portrait of Our Nation in 2020, with a foreword written by Catherine. In May 2021, Catherine received her first dose of COVID-19 vaccine by NHS staff at the Science Museum in London, encouraging use of the vaccine and thanking the staff for playing a part in the rollout. In October 2022, she became patron to Preet Chandy, a British Army medical officer who aimed to complete a 1,000-mile solo expedition in the South Pole after finishing a 700-mile journey in the continent earlier that year. Catherine has been hosting a Christmas carol concert at Westminster Abbey called Together at Christmas annually since December 2021. The 2021 concert honored those who made significant contributions during the COVID-19 pandemic. In 2022, the event was dedicated to honoring the efforts of individuals, families, and communities across the United Kingdom, and it also paid tribute to Queen Elizabeth II. The 2023 service celebrated those who support babies, young children, and families across the United Kingdom. In March 2022 and amid the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Catherine and William made a donation to help the refugees. In February 2023, they donated to the Disasters Emergency Committee, D.C., which was helping victims of the 2023 Turkey, Syria earthquake. In May 2023, Catherine hosted the first children's picnic at the Chelsea Flower Show for students from 10 primary schools who were participating in the Royal Horticultural Society's campaign for school gardening. Mental Health Advocacy at HM Prison High Down, September 2023 Catherine has tackled issues surrounding mental health and disabilities and has previously made visits to charities and hospitals such as St. Thomas Hospital and the Maurice Wall Clinical Neuroscience Institute to spend time with mothers and children who deal with these issues. She has also been credited with raising national awareness of children's mental health. Benita Refson, president of Place 2B, has praised her work, saying that she would shine the spotlight on child mental health, while Peter Fonagy, CEO of the Anna Freud Center has called her one of the most important figures in the field, and stated that, to the millions of children who have been suffering in silence, she is their voice. In recognition of their work with charities concerned with children's mental health, Catherine and William were awarded the Gold Blue Peter Badge, an award previously granted to Queen Elizabeth II, to encourage people to open up about their mental health issues. 
Catherine, William and Harry initiated the Mental Health Awareness Campaign Heads Together in April 2016, the campaign was first envisioned by Catherine earlier that year. Heads Together reportedly resulted in over 1 million people speaking out about their mental health, and an investment of £3 million in mental health innovations, she later voluntarily talked about her struggles as a mother, and admitted that she suffered a lack of confidence and feelings of ignorance during certain periods of time. Catherine has discussed her experiences with mum guilt in balancing work-life commitments, and described bringing her newborn home from the hospital for the first time as terrifying. Duh. She has also highlighted the importance of a happy home and a safe environment for children, and described her passion for the outdoors, referencing it as an asset to building childhood well-being and developmental foundations. She launched the Mentally Healthy Schools website, which helps the students and staff with access to reliable and practical resources to improve awareness, knowledge, and confidence in supporting pupils' mental health. Catherine held sessions for the program at the Mental Health and Education Conference in 2019. After two years of development, the website had over 250,000 visitors accessing its resources in February 2016. She traveled to Edinburgh to promote the work of Place 2B and launch the Children's Mental Health Week, which she commemorates annually. Catherine Guest edited HuffPost UK as a part of the Young Minds Matter movement an effort to raise awareness for children's mental health issues. In 2019, Catherine worked with the Royal Horticultural Society as one of the co-designers for a garden display at the Chelsea Flower Show. She designed the Back to Nature Garden together with Andre Davies and Adam White. The garden, which featured a treehouse, waterfall, rustic den, and a campfire, among other parts, was unveiled at the Chelsea Flower Show in May 2019 to emphasize the benefits the natural world brings to mental and physical well-being. The garden was later expanded and moved to Hampton Court Palace as a part of the Hampton Court Palace Flower Show, before being shown at the Back to Nature Festival at RHS Garden Wisley, a playground, inspired by the Back to Nature Garden, was built on the Sandringham Estate in 2021. In May 2019, as a part of their Heads Together initiative, Catherine together with her husband and in-laws, launched Shout, a text messaging service for those who have mental issues. As of November 2020, the program has facilitated over half a million conversations. In October 2019, Catherine, together with some of her royal relatives, voiced a PSA video for Public Health England as part of its Every Mind Matters program, Da. In March 2020, she and William started supporting a new mental health initiative by the Public Health England amidst the COVID-19 pandemic in the United Kingdom. In April 2020, the couple announced Our Frontline, an initiative providing mental health support to emergency medical workers. In May 2020, the couple's recorded radio message for Mental Health Awareness Week was broadcast across all the stations in the United Kingdom. In June 2020, Catherine hosted an online assembly to 80 elementary school students across the United Kingdom, focused on the importance of self-care and expressing one's feelings openly. In February 2021, Catherine recorded a video message about the importance of positive mental health during the pandemic. The video has been watched by over 3.5 million people. In May 2021, William and Catherine, with other prominent personalities, voiced 2021 Mental Health Minute, a one-minute record delivered by Radio Center and something else to mark 2021 Mental Health Awareness Week. The record was broadcast across all radio stations in the United Kingdom and reached over 20 million listeners. In May 2022, the couple voiced the Mental Health Minute message again, which was broadcast on every radio station in the United Kingdom on May 13 and asked people to help individuals around them that suffer from loneliness. In February 2022, Catherine made a surprise appearance on BB's Bedtime Stories, where she read The Owl Who Was Afraid of the Dark by Jill Tomlinson as part of the conclusion of Children's Mental Health Week. In October 2022, to mark World Mental Health Day, she and William took over Newsbeat and interviewed four guests on topics related to mental health. In the following year, the couple took part in a forum for young people in Birmingham, alongside BBC Radio 1 and a charity called The Mix, called Exploring Our Emotional Worlds, continuing their long-standing work to promote mental well-being. Early Years and Childhood Development with Jill Biden at Connor Downs Academy, Cornwall, June 2021 During the initial years of her charity work, 
Catherine became interested in the connection between the first five years of childhood and conditions such as homelessness, mental health, and addiction in later life. In March 2018, she hosted a symposium with the Royal Society of Medicine, focusing on children's health, and launched the Early Years Intervention Support Initiative. In May 2018, she established the Early Years Steering Group. In January 2020, Catherine launched Five Big Questions on the Under Fives, a nationwide survey on development during early years. The survey was conducted by Ipsos Mori and contained further qualitative and ethnographic research on the early years. It received over 500,000 responses. The results of the survey were released in November 2020. The findings outlined five key topics surrounding early childhood, including parental mental health and wider community health and support. In July 2020, she supported and assisted in the development of BBC's Tiny Happy People initiative, providing free digital resources to parents with young children. In August 2020, she headed a donation drive to benefit baby banks nationwide, including Little Village, which spurred over 10,000 donations from Marks & Spencer, Tesco, John Lewis & Partners, and Sainsbury's. In June 2021, Catherine launched the Royal Foundation Center for Early Childhood to conduct work, research, and campaigns with other organizations on issues surrounding the early years. In February 2022, Catherine visited Denmark on behalf of the Royal Foundation Center for Early Childhood. She visited the University of Copenhagen and met officials from the Center for Early Intervention and Family Studies. She visited Stenerton Forest School to learn about its approach to learning which focuses on the student's social and emotional development rather than academic skills. She also visited Lego Foundation Play Lab at University College Copenhagen. In June 2022, Catherine hosted her first roundtable discussion with politicians on early childhood development. In January 2023, Catherine launched the Shaping S initiative through the Royal Foundation Center for Early Childhood, a long-term campaign aimed at raising awareness about early childhood development and its importance. In November 2023, she delivered the keynote speech at the Shaping Us National Symposium held at the Design Museum in London. Public image and style Catherine, prominent for her fashion style, has been placed on numerous best-dressed lists. The Kate Middleton effect is the trend that she is reported to have had in sales of particular products and brands. In 2011, 2012 and 2013, Catherine was listed as one of Time magazine's 100 most influential people in the world. In 2014, she was lauded as a British cultural icon, with young adults from abroad naming her among a group of people who they most associated with UK culture. Catherine was also named in the International Best Dressed Hall of Fame list in the same year. In December 2022, she was found to be the second most liked member of the royal family by statistics and polling company YouGov while an Ipsos favorability poll in April 2023 suggested that she was the most liked member. In 2023 and 2024, The Independent included Catherine on its influence list. Speaking to the Times on Catherine's 40th birthday, her aide stated that she does not accept advice on a PR basis and will never do something because she thinks the media will like it. Jamie Lother Pinkerton, Catherine and William's former private secretary, stated that she has that almost old-fashioned, Queen Mother attitude to drama, she just doesn't do it. Privacy and the media The death of Diana, Princess of Wales, while being chased by paparazzi in August 1997, has since influenced her elder son, William's, attitude towards the media. William and Catherine have often requested that, when off duty, their privacy should be respected. After her graduation from university, Middleton was faced with widespread press attention and was often photographed by the paparazzi. In October 2005, she complained through her lawyer about harassment from the media, stating she had done nothing significant to warrant publicity and complained that photographers were permanently stationed outside her flat. Former Royal Press Secretary Dickie Arbiter stated that her treatment by the press drew parallels to the tumultuous experience of Diana in the early years of her marriage. Between 2005 and 2006, Middleton's phone was hacked 155 times according to former news of the World Royal editor Clive Goodman, who was involved in a phone hacking scandal by the newspaper that targeted the royal family. In 2005, after Middleton was chased by the paparazzi on her way to an interview, William consulted her. 
and her father and penned a legal letter to newspapers requesting that they respect her privacy. In April 2006, her lawyers issued new warnings to the Daily Mail, the Daily Star, and the Sun, and the picture agencies Big Pictures and Matrix after they published photographs of Middleton on a bus during a shopping trip. Media attention increased around the time of Middleton's 25th birthday in January 2007, where 20 photographers and five television crews photographed her leaving for work. Warnings were issued by Prince Charles, Prince William, and Middleton's lawyers, who threatened legal action. Two newspaper groups, News International, which publishes The Times and The Sun, and The Guardian Media Group, publishers of The Guardian, decided to refrain from publishing paparazzi pictures of Middleton, but continued to use photographs of her at public events. In March 2007, her lawyers filed a formal complaint to the Press Complaints Commission, PCC, over a photograph published on the Daily Mirror that was taken as a result of harassment. In April 2007, Middleton reached a settlement with the Daily Mirror, which was followed by a warning by the PCC over her treatment by the press. In July 2007, MPs on the Culture, Media, and Sports Select Committee stated in a report on press regulation that Middleton was the victim of clear and persistent harassment by the paparazzi and criticized the lack of intervention by the PCC who circulated a letter from her solicitors on the issue of press harassment, but said they were not directly asked by her lawyers to act. In 2010, Middleton pursued an invasion of privacy claim against two agencies and photographer Neeraj Tana, who took photographs of her playing tennis over Christmas 2009 while on holiday in Cornwall. She was awarded £5,000 damages, legal costs, and an apology from the photographic press agency Rex Features Ltd., and announced that the money would be donated to charity. In 2011, close associates of Jonathan Rees, a private investigator connected to the News International phone hacking scandal, stated that he had targeted Catherine during her period as William's girlfriend. In May 2011, the Middleton family complained to the PCC after photographs of Catherine, her sister, and their mother. In bikinis while on holiday in 2006 on board a yacht off Ibiza were published in the Mail on Sunday. Daily Mail, News of the World, and Daily Mirror. One of the photographs showed Catherine's sister topless, which prompted the family to complain about newspapers breaching the editor's code of practice by invading their privacy. In September 2011, Daily Mail, The Mail on Sunday, and Daily Mirror all agreed to have the images removed from their website and never publish them again following a deal negotiated by the PCC. In September 2012, the French edition of Closer and the Italian gossip magazine Chi published photographs of Catherine sunbathing topless while on holiday at the Chateau d'Atet, a private chateau on a 260-hectare estate 71 km, north of Aix in Provence. Analysts from the Times believed the photographs were taken from the D-22, Valcluse, road half a kilometer from the Poulet distance that would require an 800mm or a 1000mm lens. On September 17, 2012, William and Catherine filed a criminal complaint with the French Prosecution Department and launched a claim for civil damages at the Tribunal de Grande Instance de Nanterre. The following day the courts granted an injunction against Closer, prohibiting further publication of the photographs, and announced a criminal investigation would be initiated. Under French law, punitive damages cannot be awarded. But intrusions of privacy are a criminal offense carrying a maximum jail sentence of one year and a fine of up to €45,000 for individuals and €225,000 for companies. In September 2017, Closer was fined €100,000 and its editor Lawrence Pio and owner Ernesto Mari were each fined €45,000. In December 2012, two Australian radio hosts, Michael Christian and Mel Gregg, called King Edward VII's hospital, where Catherine was an inpatient for hyperemesis gravidarum. Pretending to be Queen Elizabeth II and Prince Charles, Greg and Christian spoke to a nurse on Catherine's ward, inquiring about her condition. Following a hospital inquiry and a public backlash against the hoax, Jacintha Saldana, the nurse who put the call through to the ward, committed suicide. The radio hosts subsequently apologized for their actions. In February 2013, Chi published the first photos of Catherine's exposed baby bump, taken during her vacation on the private island of Mustique. The British press refused to publish the paparazzi shots, while Catherine was visiting the Blue Mountains in Sydney, 
a picture was taken of her bare bottom as her dress blew up. Many newspapers outside the United Kingdom published the picture. In October 2014, Catherine and William sent a legal letter to a freelance photographer who had put their son George and his nanny under surveillance, asking the individual to stop harassing and following them. On August 14, 2015, Kensington Palace published a letter detailing what it stated were the dangerous and invasive efforts of the media to get paparazzi pictures of Prince George and Princess Charlotte. Jason Knopf, Communications Secretary to the Cambridges, wrote the letter to media standards organizations in various countries. In March 2019, the royal family introduced new rules for followers, commenting on its official social media accounts in response to the online abuse aimed at Catherine and her sister-in-law Meghan. In May 2020, Kensington Palace said that the cover story of Tatler magazine titled Catherine the Great contained a swathe of inaccuracies and false misrepresentations. Despite the palace's statement that most of the material was not given to them before publication, the magazine's editor-in-chief announced that he would stand behind the story as the palace had been aware of it for months. In September 2020, after pressure from the couple's lawyers, the magazine removed remarks on Catherine's family and other similar claims from the online version of the story. Photograph controversy in March 2024, the Associated Press, AFP, Reuters, and Getty Images withdrew from publishing a Mother's Day photograph of Catherine and her children that was attributed to her husband and accompanied by a personal message from her. The image was issued by Kensington Palace and was the first official photograph of Catherine to be released since her surgery in January 2024, although there had been an unauthorized photo by TMZ released outside the UK in February that year. The Associated Press later explained that they issued a kill order because of concerns regarding digital alteration of the image at its source, AFP said it withdrew the image because of an editorial issue, comma, whereas the Associated Press and Reuters said that Princess Charlotte's sleeve was the area that appeared manipulated, and the Associated Press also said there was an inconsistency in the alignment of her hand. The following day, in a message posted by Kensington Palace, Catherine apologized for any confusion created and admitted to editing the family photograph that was shared publicly. Titles, styles, honors, and arms upon her marriage in April 2011, Catherine automatically became a princess of the United Kingdom, gained the style Royal Highness and the titles Duchess of Cambridge, Countess of Strathen, and Baroness Carrick Fergus. She was normally known as Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cambridge except in Scotland, where she was instead called Her Royal Highness, the Countess of Strathen. On her father-in-law's accession on September 8, 2022, Catherine also became Duchess of Cornwall and Duchess of Rothsey. Thus, she briefly held the title Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Cornwall and Cambridge. On September 9, 2022, the King announced William's appointment as Prince of Wales and Earl of Chester, thereby making Catherine Princess of Wales and Countess of Chester. She has since been known as Her Royal Highness the Princess of Wales, and as Her Royal Highness the Duchess of Rothsey in Scotland, honours Catherine is a Dame Grand Cross of the Royal Victorian Order, and a recipient of the Royal Family Order of Queen Elizabeth II.